will chant the mantra Om Namo Narayanaya together a few times. So you're welcome to sit with the back straight and you can close the eyes and focus on the repetition of the mantra as a means to elevate the mind into a state of peace and harmony. Om Namo Narayanaya 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 Just a few moments of silence Om, 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 Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejas Vinavadi Tamastu, Ma vit visha vahai Om shanti 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 Om peace 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 Ombolo Sadgu Shivananda Maharaj Ki Jai Ombolo Sami Vishnu Devananda Maharaj Ki Jai Om Namashivaya so good evening to everybody and uh, we welcome everybody that uh, arrived today at the ashram any of the new guests today we actually welcome uh, several new karma yogis to the ashram and also we welcome the few guests so we welcome everyone and uh, last night we started to share uh, some teachings on the subject of sadhana sadhana means uh, spiritual practice and uh, we shared uh, some teachings of Swami Shivananda on the subject where Swami Shivananda explains that sadhana is the conscious process of freeing oneself from limitations, learning how to recognize different uh, causes of affliction and causes of suffering, what the yogis call, call causes of limitations within our own mind, and learning how to transcend them. Basically, the yogis explain that at the moment we are caught in some wrong ideas, or as Swami Shambhu Devanandaji shared very beautifully, that we are caught in some wrong representations of reality, just like when we have a virtual reality. And Swamiji gave a nice example how when you are uh, using virtual reality, even though you may know intellectually that this is not real, it has a very uh, powerful impact. Meaning you, even though you start by knowing that this is illusory, it definitely takes over you. The, the emotions are there and the, the capacity to be happy and peaceful is bound by this false representation of reality. Actually, Swami Vishnu, used to, in this regard, he used to share the story 
where I believe it was back in the 1970s or 80s when the movie The Exorcist uh, came out, you know, the, f the famous movie. And Swamiji said he wanted the, to go with some of the staff to go and see the movie. Actually, he said that he wanted to see it because he had some relatives who actually were experts in this field of exorcism. And he wanted to see how authentic the movie is. But then he was sharing how when he was there uh, watching the movie with the other staff, although you know people know when they're watching a movie that this is just colors and on a screen and they're just sounds and it's just a movie, you're watching a screen, but people were totally taken by it. As we know, when you watch a movie, your the emotions are definitely there and even though it may appear so uh, initially we know it's just a movie, we are definitely taken by it. So in the same way, this is what the yogis are telling, if we are so influenced by watching movies or now virtual reality, how can we expect that we are not totally taken by our mind? You know, it's something that we are not even aware of how our mind creates this false a understanding about what we are and about what reality is and for us to be able to detect that is false is almost uh, uncomprehensible that we will be able to do that because we are so much uh, caught into it. Not just we are so much caught into it, we are so invested in it. This is what's called the ego. The ego is this uh, propelling force that makes us to be invested in something that is false, in, in illusory. And what the yogis are explaining, that this wrong understanding about who we are, this wrong understanding of, of reality, is the cause of all suffering. And what sadhana is all about, to be able to recognize the truth, recognize who we truly are, and in that way, to be able to remove all suffering from its very root. So the whole purpose of sadhana is to be able to recognize the wrong ideas and to overcome them. So the secret for succeeding in sadhana is always keeping the clarity about what sadhana is all about. Always being clear about what is our destination. Now, uh, what we wanted to share a little bit tonight is from this book uh, called Sadhana uh, by Swami Shivananda, where Swami Shivananda describes some of the main obstacles on the spiritual path. These are very good things to study because, uh, because uh, these are things that are definite to appear on our journey, meaning these are things that we're going to be struggling with at one point or the other, uh, during our spiritual path. So the more that we understand them, the more we're going to be equipped to overcome them. So they won't have the, as much effect on taking us astray. So this is, uh, again, from this book, Sadhana, and it's a small essay called The Main Impediments to Sadhana. The main things that are basically taking us away from being able to reclaim our true happiness that are unconsciously taking us towards suffering and ten instead of towards happiness. So Swami Shivananda writes, the spiritual path is doubtless beset with various difficulties. It is a razor's path. You will fall down several times, but you will have to rise up quickly and walk again with more zeal, boldness, and cheerfulness. Every stumbling block will become a stepping stone to success or ascent in the hill of spiritual knowledge. So the yogis are explaining that it's for sure that on our spiritual journey, we will fall many times. Fall meaning we will make mistakes, we will do things that are not really skillful, uh, from the point of view of finding happiness. And the reason being is that uh, our mind is ever-changing. 
based on past actions, past impressions, what we call karma. So at one time, our mind is going to be more clear, what we call sattvic, and at that time, we're going to be very inspired, like after a good yoga class or when we chant, and there is suddenly inspiration and clarity and great motivation on the spiritual path. But then another day, the mind is going to be a bit anxious, the mind is going to be depressed, the mind is going to be angry, the mind is going to be doubtful. This is guaranteed that even if one day we're very inspired with our spiritual practice, another day we will not be as inspired. And this is what the yogis are teaching us, that this is a result of some past actions. And if we are not prepared for those days where the mind is agitated, we are going to be taken by this. We're going to be taken by these different forms of negative thinking. And we will not be able to uh, recognize them for what they are, and we will not be skillful enough to deal with them properly. And basically, we will be postponing our capacity to find real happiness. We're going to be taken in the wrong path. So this is why the yogis are saying it's a razor's edge path, because even if we're very high at any moment, some past negative tendencies can come into the mind. If we, and if we don't know how to deal with it, we're going to be, as Swami Shivananda would say, crushed by them. So. One has to know that although we may be feeling very good and very inspired and we may have been, been practicing for years, still different past tendencies can come up. And we need to know how to deal with them when they come so we don't get overwhelmed by them, that we don't get deluded by them. So Swamiji says, Every aspirant will have to face various sorts of difficulties in the spiritual path. You need not be discouraged. So need not be discouraged, meaning even if we've been practicing for years and now something is coming our way and we are having doubts or we may have anger or fear or depression, we should not think that all that we have done has lost. That's not the meaning we should know that even if we are very high, there could be moments that we are low. And we need to know how to deal properly with those moments, but not get discouraged by it. So muster all your strength and courage and march afresh on the path with redoubled vigor and energy. So we need to learn to develop the skill of rekindling the, the energy, rekindling the enthusiasm about the sadhana, even when we are uh, at points of low. So here, Swami Shivananda is now sharing, and we'll share a few today and some tomorrow, some points about what are common uh, mistakes that we may do on the path that are taking us in the wrong direction. Some negative tendencies to be conscious of. So first one, Swamiji says, if you can give up idle talks and gossiping and idle curiosity to hear rumors and news of others, and if you do not mendle with the affairs of others, you will be free from all sorts of obstacles that crop up in your way. So Swamiji is talking here about learning to overcome the strong tendency for gossiping, gossiping and idle talking. So Swami Vishnu used to say he would compare gossiping to like if you would take a toothpick, that's a nice example, but uh, you take a toothpick and it's, you put it in somebody else's mouth and then you smell it. It's a you know, very uh, gross. Uh, <laughs> but just to point out how much you're basically taking other people's like, negativity and garbage and you are indulging in it. It uh, doesn't make sense. And um, what the yogis are teaching that this uh, tendency 
to speak ill of others or to gossip, which is a common phenomena, is a big impediment on our spiritual path, meaning it's a big obstacle for us to find real happiness. It's a great uh, force that holds us back. Basically, the, the, the pleasure that we get from gossiping is a matter of the ego, of trying, gaining some feeling of superiority. We feel good about ourselves in one way or the other by, by speaking about others. But what is the big problem with this? Many problems, but why is it such of an obstacle on the spiritual path? Good to know. Is that <laughs> okay. So many, many things can be there. One main reason why a gossip is such of an issue is this strengthens the false notion of separation. When we, we speak about others, we are naturally strengthening this perception that others are others. We don't see others as our own self or as divine when we indulge in gossip uh, or backbiting. And basically, you see, whatever we speak is a, a grossification or manifestation of our thinking. And the more we speak in a certain way, we are strengthening the thoughts that are, uh, that are the cause of those speech. So if we speak in a certain way, we're strengthening thinking in a certain way. So we are definitely strengthening the strong notion that others are others. And this is the cause of all suffering, to see others as others, not as our own self. So Swami Shivananda is teaching, if we want to be able to free our mind from wrong ideas, from ideas to take us towards bondage, we have to recognize uh, the tendencies that are creating that, like wrong speech. So if we want to free the mind from seeing others as others, we need to also learn to watch how we speak, that we don't strengthen that idea. Then the second uh, impediment that Swami Shivananda shares here, if worldly thoughts try to enter the mind, reject them have steady devotion to the spiritual path. So of course, not just speech takes us away from finding happiness, but the main thing is that our mind is taking us in the wrong direction. We are thinking what Swami Shivananda calls worldly thoughts. Now what is worldly thoughts? Basically any thought that is separated from the uh, recognition of the divine presence. Whenever we are thinking about objects of the world and we don't consider them as being uh, ourself or we don't consider them to be divine, this is what is called worldly thought. Basically, when something has its own separate, independent existence and what tends to happen because of that, the negative emotions arise, that we either a crave it or we have a repulsion towards it because we don't see it as us, as the self or as God. So what is the essence of our sadhana is to be able to recognize that our mind is gradually rejecting worldly thoughts. Thoughts that are uh, separated from the awareness that God is there. See? Uh, actually, in, in a very short time, we'll be having the special um, celebration. Well, in, in the end of September is a very special holiday for yogis all over the world. This is the Navaratri, this honoring of the Divine Mother. And in this uh, celebration, nine nights of worshiping the Divine Mother, uh, every night we chant a special hymn called Ya Devi. Uh, it's a special hymn coming from the scripture, the Devi Mahatmyam. And there, in this hymn, every verse, we salute the Divine Mother in different forms. For example, we salute the Divine Mother in the form of memory, 
in the form of power, in the form of hunger, thirst, in the form of thoughts. And basically, this is a very powerful meditation to recognize that every aspect of our life is the Divine Mother or is the divinity itself. And this is really the, the essence of sadhana. How can we recognize everything that we usually take as separate is actually being sacred or being divine? So what Swami Shivananda says here, the impediment is that we, the mind is filled of worldly thoughts. So these are the two we'll share today, gossiping and worldly thoughts, and more we will share uh, tomorrow morning. Om Tat Sat. Om, 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 Shanti, 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 Om, Peace, Peace, Peace. Ambalo Sadgu Shivananda Maharaj Ki Jai. Ambalo Sami Vishnu Devananda Maharaj Ki Jai.